Welcome to You Talks, brought to you by State of You. Uh, welcome everyone to a new episode of You Talks, our podcast at State of Youth. Today we are very happy to have as a guest Aaron Skart. Aaron, would you like to introduce yourself to our listeners? So, hello, I'm Aaron. I'm 16 from Liverpool and I'm currently campaigning for children's rights with incarcerated parents. Nice. Aaron is one of our top three this year for the International Children Peace Prize 2023. Aaron, how does it feel like to be a top three? Oh, it's... I can't comprehend it. Like, it still hasn't processed. Um, being told top five, I still couldn't measure it. But now top three is just that further level ahead, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> how would it feel like to be the winner of the International oh, Children Peace Prize? It's like... I don't know. It's like... It's such a large scale, isn't it? So, like, I don't know. I suppose we'll have to find out if I get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think it's going to help with your activism? Definitely. Um, seeing the scale of what he's previously done with the likes of Greta Thunberg and then because what she's done after she won it, um, seeing what she's done with like environmental change and climate change, I think it was, um, seeing the amount of support she's got and how we've now changing to benefit the planet. Yeah. is definitely amazing so seeing that level and then seeing what i can do to help that with my campaigns definitely yeah. something i'm looking forward to can you tell our listeners what is your activism about so i campaign for children with incarcerated parents especially because it's such a gray area in society i want to shed a bit of light onto it yeah. um like especially males in that area like because we're supposed to be some like hard rock that's supposed everyone's supposed to fall onto and not show our emotions like that's the key message I, i've seen growing up so i want to change that and i want to be like okay you can speak you can and if i can use myself as a platform yeah. that's something i'm purpose personally working on that's very brave thank you how did you get into this sort of activism how did you start so um initially i met dr lorna brooks um through other networks and she had started her own group called Time Matters UK, um, which is something I'm part of. So like I campaign for her a lot, um, but we do podcasts, we do conferences. Um, so initially it started off with like talking to the children about their own feelings. Mm -hmm. So that might, made me want to speak about it like to other people and try and change things. That sort of motivation sparked. And then we had one significant um, conference, Westminster conference, um, where we spoke in Westminster to a bunch of MPs and government bodies about what it's like to have parents in prison. Um, and that sort of moment was when it clicked, okay, I need to do something for these children. Like, I want to be the voice, I want to be that person that changes. So I even said to my mother, it's not about me no more, mother, it's about those little children. So. That's where it all started. It's funny that you say it's for those little children yeah. because you're still a I was child little yourself. Myself, yeah. yeah, yourself, right? That's very, very nice. And um, did you see some changes happening since you started your journey? Not immediately, no. But um, one point I do specifically remember was the likes of fire trucks. Yeah. You know, you see the advertisement on the back of fire yeah. trucks. I remember seeing something on the back of that about domestic violence, and it's okay to stand up and be. Oh, like let it known and I was thought okay I may have had participation in that I may have helped that change happen so then I've seen that but then we're also helping the probation service in the UK and yeah. um, better perform their work nice. thinking about the family instead of just the person who's rehabilitating or locked up so they're the changes that we're seeing now yeah that's very very nice to hear that is changing but yeah do you think there's still uh, work to do? There's still a lot of room yeah. for improvement, yeah. Um, my main goal is to not sort of perfect, because there'll always be room for improvement, but better um, the British law and how that helps children, yeah. but then also help the world follow on as well. Because my main thought is if we could use Britain as a beacon, like because obviously other countries like Finland are doing really well in other aspects. If we can incorporate, say, like the whole world into benefiting the children, you'll see like great output in children because nice. um, I think the statistics one in four yeah I've got a parents in prison yeah. so across the world it's quite a lot of numbers it's a lot of children yeah. right yeah so 
those children that feel limited, like myself, those children that have like got ambitions but don't know where to go, feel limited, things like that. If I can help them grow, yeah. the world will be such a better place. That's very nice. So your hope is to go international? Hopefully, yeah. Nice. That's like the idolizing dream. Yeah, yeah. If you could like have a super big dream, that would be yeah. nice. Can you tell me how your personal experience kind of shaped your activism and the way that you right. talk with other children? So, personally, I've been through quite a hectic life, I'll say, at the age of nine. So, obviously, when you're nine, you're, you're still growing, you haven't fully developed. Even your brain's still yeah. learning and growing. So, the things I went through, and then I use, like, as I was speaking before, I used that foundation of, like, those children relating and telling me their messages. And then I'm sort of the voice as well as my own personal story yeah. um, to speak to those who are in charge, shall we say, or have the power to make change to help them better the world, shall we say. That's very selfless of you and very brave. Thank you. That's very nice. Um, do you think it's important to have a support system, not only, or do you think this support system helped yourself or just the children that you talk to? Um, it, I know for a fact they helped me definitely. Um, I don't want to say it was for sure happened, but if I didn't have the likes of Time Matters UK and Lorna Brooks, um, I wouldn't be the person I am today. Um, I want to say that I wouldn't be to the quality yeah. of I am today. Yeah. I don't want to say that I'd be like, doing illegal activities and things like that, but I certainly wouldn't be the type of person I am today. So that support is fundamental, like that support is definitely needed. But I suppose it's like how you use that support network and like it's got to be channeled in the right way. Of course. Do you have a message for children that maybe are going through the same experience that you went through? So as someone that's myself, especially males, um, it's seen as you can't really speak. Like, you're supposed to just deal with it, be like the front line. It's okay to speak, like, it's okay to be a human. At the end of the day, we're still blood flesh. We're not this rock that, like, everyone's supposed to fall back on. We are blood, we are flesh, we have, we have emotions too. So feel free to use them. We were given them for a reason, you know what I mean? So, yeah, stand up, like, be you. Nice. And do you have maybe a tip for someone that is starting out being a change maker and like trying to speak up and to try to fix an issue that they see within their community. If you have an issue in your community, make it known. I think one of the main problems people face is they're too scared to speak. Yeah. Um, now sure, you may get things wrong. I've got things wrong myself, but then you pick up and you learn from it. You know what I mean? Like you speak what you're thinking. And then if you face a problem, you work around the problem. Nice. You don't just fall at the, last, the very first hurdle. Nice. Do you have plans this coming months within your activism? Um, so, me and Lorna are currently working on a few projects. Um, I'm not willing to speak on them just yeah. for research purposes, but we do have quite a few projects going on around prisons and things like that, so yeah. Nice. And personally, what is your plan for the future? Personally, my plan for the future is get college sorted and then hopefully join the military, as well as working alongside Time Matters UK. And further than them. Is there anything that you would like to tell to someone that maybe is going through the same experience that you are going through? So one thing I do remember is when I was a child and my dad had first got locked away, shall we say, I always felt like I could change it. Like I could maybe tell the policeman what's been going on, things like that, just change it. And I suppose I casted all the blame onto myself. Yeah. And that made me like, I want to say fall down the spiral a little bit. So. For those that are listening, it really isn't your fault. Um, don't ever feel like you could have changed it, like it was you. Trust me, the world works in mysterious ways. It was not your fault. Absolutely. 100% I support what you're saying. And also, maybe what would you like to say to grown-ups around grown -up. the world that kind of like have some ideas regarding children with imprisoned parents. Yeah, so as we were saying before, like adults kind of have a skewed view on children. Yeah. Um, they always feel like they might know better when obviously with lived experience, I kind of know potentially a bit more. So like just to listen to the children, and not make a cast view on them straight away, yeah. which is sort of what I'm campaigning for, like the stigma. Like even something as small as that being changed can just allow things to blow, shall we say, yeah. and better those.
Do you think stigma is the biggest problem that children with prison parents it's definitely one of the yeah. biggest areas. There's so many to list. So you've got like media stigma, you've got other people's views. You've got, there's loads of topics to speak about, but to, like stigma is definitely one of the top candidates. Yeah. And um, do you think bully kind of also uh, comes with the stigma? Um, it's a part of it. So one of my personal stories is having to change my house yeah. because of bullying I faced. Um, it got to the severity of I was getting told I was going to lose my life. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, to the point, like, because of people's views and perceptions on what I'd been through, like, they hadn't witnessed this, so they don't know what's actually gone on. So they just made skews and visions on it. Yeah. So I feel like if that part can be sorted, like, obviously bullying's one of them, it's kind of hard to combat, but if we can try and tackle it, or at least make it a lot easier, or support networks out there, then certain things like that, I wouldn't have to change school because absolutely. people have told me I'm going to lose my life, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. Things like that are just completely out of order. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Aaron. Um, is there anything that you would like to say as a last uh, thing to our listeners? No, no, just thanks for having me. And for those that are going through what I'm going through, as I've said before, it isn't your fault. You will grow, you will develop. And thanks for listening. Thank you so much. Guys, thank you for listening in. I will uh, speak to you in the next episode. Thanks.